Welcome to this week's RAW. You can see we've sped this initial part up and we're not putting an intro in just because of the length of this video. But to walk you through, I put down another coat of the Frost Giant White on the wings that we did not second base coat in the last video. This is just to make sure that we've got good even coating and starting to blend in those magenta tones that we put on some of the wing inner pieces to tone them down so they're not as stark in contrast. They'll be a little deeper in the wings in the painting scheme, but still able to be viewed in the finished product. So this Dragon, the video on this week is definitely longer than our average, and that's primarily due to there aren't a lot of different textures. There's no armor, there's no fabrics, it's just the dragon itself. With this dragon not having so many different textures, we stick primarily with one paint and have a very large miniature to cover. So in one sitting, it can take quite a bit of while. And I went ahead and sped up some of the areas where I wasn't just talking or discussing anything in particular, just to condense the video a little bit. But if you're watching us paint the raw series as we're painting these large miniatures, feel free to drop a comment below Subscribe so you can get the content each week. Get your notifications so you know when we're posting. And of course, share the video to help us grow. With this Blight Fang Dragon, this is a Reaper's Bones and a large miniature. So if you're using this for your gaming, this will go on a three inch base covering at scale 15 feet in its primary space. Of course, the miniature is definitely larger than that, but that's its primary space. We will be basing this once it's done painted and having been sealed. This is again, just sped up so that we can condense the video. And because we're just painting the wings and some of the thinner areas with the white, we've just sped it up to condense. After this step, we'll do a wash of blue, but you can see kind of the magenta areas standing out. And now we'll go through after that has been dried. It was allowed to dry for 24 hours. You wanna make sure that if you're adding a wash on, you keep that flowing really thin and that the layer below is completely dry. Otherwise, you'd just be removing paint. So this is just a morning after blue, a Reaper paint, thin down. The ratio is about 80% water, 20% paint. So definitely very thin. This is brushed over the entire miniature. This is what's gonna push in shadows and add that cool effect to make it really feel like a cold climate creature. With this wash going on, I cover the entire miniature. Now gravity will take a big effect on this and as it's sitting to dry, it will move down. So the feet will definitely get more of this wash than the wing tips, for instance. That's okay. The illusion that it will give to the eye is actually weighted really well for that. So the deeper shadows will be down lower as if we had the light source overhead, which on the majority of the miniatures that I paint, that's how I envision that light source is illuminating the miniature from the top. 
and just going through and making sure that I get in to all the crevices between the scales. The dragon, as it's painted with that initial white coat, is going to absorb some of that blue. So the paint itself is going to be tinted into a blue color. And that's okay. Again, it gives the appearance of a cooler effect because of the tones in the paint used. The mouth, of course, last video we did with just a cancer awareness pink. Most likely in the next video after we start working on the face, we'll put in a wash, a fleshy gloss wash there to keep it looking moist and darken it up. Still has that Miami Vice vibe with the whites and blues and pink, but you'll see that change as we paint it. In this video, we're really going to be focusing on scale work. And once this area of the wash is all dried and complete, we can start diving into that. And the colors that we're using on this one will also be applied into the base because we're going to have him on an icy, broken, snowy base. The color selection here is really important in that we want it to really represent the Arctic climate and coloring as well as the base that we're going to be putting him on. We don't want it to disappear, so we'll change up a little bit of the colors and put some warm tones in select areas of this miniature because it is a living creature. We won't have any of those tones, so you won't see any of that magenta, for example, in the base. It'll only be seen on the dragon. Here, the last part that I'm putting the wash on is the wings. And that's really because the fleshiness of the wings I want to keep as thin as possible. And they do have a lot of texture, so I know that the wash is going to really settle on the wings once it's set for drying. That will have a big impact on how we paint the wings when it comes time, after all of the scale work is done. But the wings are done last for the wash, just because those will have the most visual impact after the painting of them is done. So we really want the wash to settle there. And by finishing the wings last and then setting it to dry, more of that wash is going to move down from gravity than in the scales as we're spinning it around to paint. So very important that that settles down low on the wings, which is why we're doing it last. But we're just about complete on the wash here. I'll sped up, help make this video a little bit shorter, and then we'll set it down to dry and Give it about 24 hours before we start working on the scales because we want this layer as well to be nice and dry before we apply any wet paint. Then as we prep to do the scales, we'll slow the video down, most likely just because I'm doing a lot of talking. Leave your comments below on what you think so far on the techniques and the steps we're taking. All right, as we get back to painting in slower motion, our white dragon, we did the speed coats of wash. Now we're just going back through and relaying down our initial frost giant white, just on the ends of the scales and this is where it takes 
quite a while because going through and doing these scale by scale is quite a challenge of time. But by doing this, that wet coat that we put in there stays recessed and gives us great cool shadows. So there's no doubt that some of this is going to be sped up as well, just as we go through and do a million different scales. And just nice thin paint so that it blends in. Remember, this is the color we had put down initially. You could go through and dry brush this dragon, which gives a very similar effect and definitely goes a lot faster. You can see areas where that blue puddled really hard. It's the challenges with washes on a large mini like this. Is that pooling. So while this is already looking white, remember this is an off-white. So as we go through, we'll blend this with a pure white and then highlight with a pure white. So we've got two more layers to do here. And what that'll do is really bring the tips of the scales even brighter to a real bright white. Oh, and I've got a loose bristle there by using natural hair brushes sometimes you get a hair that'll fall out so you got to be aware of that now depending on the sculpt sometimes they have a lot more like rough area in the scales and this technique is great for kind of showcasing those you can see a couple of them here and there where it's almost like scrapes or divots in the scales but this technique lets you really go through and pick out Know, high and low places especially if they're textured that way but you don't even need to have it textured that way if you were just to go through and lay in the tip and a couple here and there which is kind of what we're doing uh, just a lot heavier because we know we've got small area to cover in the grand scheme of things and at least two more coats to do it with. So you can see already how that's really brightening up this mini, really making it look white. And those areas where you've got those deeper pools, you may have to go over a couple of times. If you're just checking out this video, this is a Reaper Miniatures Bones dragon named Blight Fang. It's 
representing a white dragon. The Reaper is not a sponsor, but each of my videos I'm going to talk a lot about them because I love their sculpts, love the company, their uh, community is fantastic. Customer service is great, and they're shipping. If you're needing miniatures in a hurry, they ship fast, right out of Denton, Texas. So right down the road from where I'm at. You'll see a little bit more where we'll do that stippling on these back scaly plates. If it stays in focus, I apologize on that. So for me, the dragons I love to paint just because they're so well sculpted. They really look cool when you're um, you know, looking at the final product, even when they're not painted. And they just really look awesome. Sculptors do a fantastic job. Put in a lot of detail. Some of them are a little bit more challenging to paint. This one here isn't too bad because it's got pretty well-defined scales. But some of them, the scales are not I guess, as well-defined. So it's a little bit more challenging to paint. And this one is not for a challenge or an exchange. This one I am painting just for myself. So I'm just going to display it on my own shelf and use it when I need in games. Of course, since we did our Frost Giant, the format of our raw videos has changed up a little bit. We are doing some editing, as you saw at the beginning of this video. Just a little bit of light editing to make it uh, a little more watchable. But if you're interested in miniature painting and you pop this on while you're at work, Maybe you have this going on in the background while you're cleaning house or using your elliptical, walking on the treadmill. I hope this is something that you find relaxing and enjoyable, inspiring. As I was kind of showing some family members the uh, dragons being worked on. It reminded me from when I was a little kid the, uh, the show Pete's Dragon. I know they just remade that not too long ago, but the original. We watched that when it was uh, many, many moons ago and brought a laugh. I'd kind of forgotten all about it, so. And using a wet palette because it's pretty dry here. We have 
have to keep our paints as moist as possible and a wet palette definitely helps that but the paint dries on the paintbrush too so occasionally I stop to clean out my brush I don't want any paint residue drying in the brush just that little bit there you can see the difference from that to that I mean it really makes that shadow layer that we added uh, very important to the miniature paint job. Again, you can do this in different techniques. You can dry brush it. Um, I'm going for kind of a kind of a speed paint. I'm not going to take a whole ton of time on this mini. Um, so it's not going to go super fast, but I'm not going for a speed painting where I get it done in just a couple of hours. So I'm not going to dry brush it. Paint all these little scales by hand. And you'll notice is if you're doing miniature painting, there will be times where it gets worse before it gets better. That's normal. Don't panic. Persevere and push through. It's kind of like the uh, saying of it's always darkest before the dawn or it's always colder right before the sun comes up. Painting is the same way. You'll go through some ugly phases. Persevere and push through. So here you can see some of the challenging areas where the scales aren't quite as differentiated around that leg area. So there are some times where you've just got to pick and choose what the scale is and how you're going to highlight it. I luck out with uh, my gamers. They have all been very generous regarding my minis. So the ones like this where you're not able to have things really perfect, they still appreciate it. So it's really, really rewarding. Yeah, I love painting these dragons. Probably one of my favorite things to paint. Just because of the variety. I kind of have that, you know, traditional mystic fantasy allure to them. Let's jump real quick up to an area where we had put in some of the magenta around the neck. And you can see it's almost a purpley color. So this one here, as we start laying in these scale highlights, you'll see it starts to hide a lot of that and that's okay. Because with another wash, with this blended in, we'll pick out that kind of magenta again and add just a touch of warmth back in there. And because we're just doing multiple, multiple layers, don't get nervous if things get pushed back in and you have to re-pick them out. 
the subtlety of the layers is going to do dividends to you. So you can see even in that center area is a good example where these aren't going to a bright white, which is what we want. We don't want the bright white just because that's going to be the final color that we put on this dragon to really have those scales brighten up on the outset. By using really thin paints, you can see as we touch up a couple that we did earlier, just doing smaller and smaller areas. We block those in, make them a little more opaque in color. And that's how we transition from the blues into the white and bring it all together. And the scales, what I look for primarily are the edges because the recesses where we put in the shadow color, where it's settled, that's where we want those wet shadow colors to stay. is in those deep recesses. And because we're using thin paints, you'll see they dry fairly quick. And we can go through and just continue to get those opaque tones that we want. There you can see some of those colors kind of bleeding through, which is great. That gives us more and more dimension by having it not be just one color or just the base color all right, let's speed it up a little bit here, just to condense. You can see how thin these paints are. Got a little too much on my brush that time. So we pick some of that up and go on to another one. You can see here where these scales start kind of coming together a little tighter on the arm. Smaller and smaller. And this area can be very challenging. And don't give up. Take your time and just push through. You can stop and move to other areas too. We'll do that here in a second. We 
just want to get some initial paint down. And then we can come back through, do another coat or two to make it more opaque. You can see already how that's starting to become a white dragon and not an off-white dragon or a blue dragon. So I'd love to hear after this white dragon what you think we should paint live next not live I take that back because I don't uh, there are occasions where I'll do live while we're making these videos but leave a comment below what would you like to see would you like to see a, a diorama being made um, another large miniature being done We've got uh, Mini Mastery that we do um, with some miniatures. Those are part of one of the D&D campaigns that I'm doing. If you want to see heroic miniatures, check that out. Um, if you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell for notifications. That way you see when we're posting new content. If you are just joining us, make sure you do subscribe. And help us grow. We're looking for getting 25 subscribers by the end of January. That's our goal. We've got a big goal coming up. And it's getting to be that time. So you can help us get there by sharing to your friends. If you have any gamers that you know or enthusiasts for miniature painting or RPGs. Share that video. So here again, getting into some challenging area. It's because here the scales get so much smaller, so much smaller. We go back over a couple of these. Just make sure they've got good opacity to them. Let's speed up again and just keep this as condensed as possible. We'll try to do this as often as we can. The uh, weekend is actually going by pretty fast this weekend. I'm kind of dismayed. Of course, it goes by when you're having fun, but we're starting to get into some decent weather. And I thought about going for a motorcycle ride. I do love to ride. I've been thinking about how to kind of incorporate some of my mini painting with my motorcycling. I haven't come up with anything yet. Nothing yet. And there again, if you start getting burnt out on an area, start seeing double or anything, just change it up and go to a different area. Those ones there I've already done. I'm just looking at bringing up that opacity.
now you can see some of the more challenging small scales as this leg is kind of flexed here the scales start going in a little bit different directions Let's move a little bit into some of the belly here. And same thing here. What we're doing is looking at leaving the shadowed area in those crevices. This has got almost like bands for the belly. So we're just gonna Lay some thin paints down, start getting those back up to closer to white. So that those segments are really called out with the shadow. And then up to when we get to it, the pure white. can see on some of the low areas where that wash we applied kind of hangs out gets a little heavier and a little thicker than other areas and that's not bad so long as you're cognizant of it continue watching where your lights are This process here is definitely time consuming on a large miniature like this. But once it's complete, it just looks amazing. Our frost giant has been being based and nearly ready for the table. You can see here some of that magenta again in that band there. The angles on this one are a little challenging and I don't have a handle just because this fellow is so massive if I had a handle it would add a few inches onto it for height and make it even more challenging for me to paint but you can see so there's kind of what we started with aside from you can see some darker areas on its leg that's okay we'll clean those up but look at the difference in that already just from the just from the base color being added to it. Cold and snowy fellow. Process wise, again, I could go through and do dry brushing. However, I'm just really fond of this technique to give it more of a, uh, I like texture, I guess, is the best way to put it. This helps add in some texture because of the thin paints and the way we're taking the brush and kind of following the curvature of the scales.
not completely covering up the washes that we did. They're blending in. So it's not going to be a, because this is off white anyhow, this layer is not going to be a true white. I'm not sure how it's coming across on the screen yet, but if you're seeing it and questioning why it isn't a true white, we have not yet gotten there. So getting to some of these areas is a little challenging. So one of my campaign groups, the party just encountered a green dragon. It was just a wormling, so nothing this big. I was a little nervous for how they'd handle it. Um, but they really did good. really handled it well. They worked as a team really well. Good communication and dealt with it. So the group itself is still fairly new. Um, that we started late last year and we're meeting every two weeks. We just this year started meeting weekly. Some of the challenges we're doing it all virtually so everybody can stay safe but I very much like meeting in person. Of course, I'm big on game aids, of course, which is one of the uh, things that I like to provide to my players are different game aids. And it's a little bit more challenging not being able to read the player's body language when you're doing it virtually. So for me, as an old school gamer, it's a little more challenging, but I think we're doing okay. But I am looking forward to when we can start meeting in person, just because it's my preference. Kind of amazing how much time you can put into miniatures like this. The time for me just goes by fast. I think for a couple of reasons. I think it's because I really enjoy doing it. It's also a really relaxing and therapeutic had someone the other day posted on a group that I'm in that they would love to do more miniature painting but their hand has too much shaking. And um, and there were a lot of people who had some good like tips and tricks. I've seen where people put a uh, rubber band on their hands to help hold them steady. But if I ever get to that point where I'm not able to steadily hold a brush, I'm going to have to find a new hobby. 
and because this for me is very therapeutic and I love doing it. Well, you can see there a little bit thickening going on on the paint. I'm going to thin that down again, clean my brush out. So you can see on that crest too, where some of that violet color has stayed in. Let's jump up there real quick. and So I'm probably going to do some of these scales off camera. Um, just so you don't have to see it. But I'm going to go in and work on this a little bit. Just so we can talk about how we're going to process it. Clean off that little bit there. It's still a little... Still a little thick for me. So I'm going to work on pulling some of that up. Nice and thin. Well, we'll let that sit for a minute and then we'll come back to it because I do want to talk a little bit about it, but now it's got to dry. And we'll switch sides a little bit here. There again, a little bit. You can see in this one here, there's a little bit of separation on those blues. Looks like there's almost a tealish color that's separated out of our blue. So we're going to be a little more generous on this side with our off-white going up into those dark areas. And because it's thin, it's not going to blot them completely out. But it'll help us blend them together a little bit. Good and opaque. There we go. Just some of the funkiness on that wash that we did. A little bit more separation in some of the tones. Which I wasn't expecting, but that's okay when things like that happen. We can always find ways to overcome things like that. In this case, just using a little bit of our unthinned paint, or not as thin paint. Laying that down, and then we'll go in and blend a little bit with the thinner. Another little speed up as we continue to paint the hundreds of scales. We want to keep this nice and condensed. Appreciate you watching. Leave a comment below on what you think of the progress so far. Again, into some kind of challenging areas where you're not exactly sure where the scales are. So you got to be very careful and cognizant, and sometimes even just drive your own path forward. All right, we're going to speed up a little bit more here. I realize the video is getting long, but again, because there aren't big variations in the miniature. There's no armor, there's no fabrics, no leathers, 
there aren't a lot of differentiations on items to paint. So in one sitting, you can be there for quite a while if you're working on the same thing. And it's harder to break the video up. With this white dragon, of course, being scaled from nose to tip of tail, the important thing is just keeping as much consistency as possible in the paints. Because this is a layer on top of the wash, we could break it up into multiple pieces. However, in our raw videos, we try to keep it as it's being painted so you can follow the progress from start to finish. We did mention that we may paint some of the scales off camera. We'll probably record those and if there's a request to see those, whether it's on Instagram or here on YouTube, we'll be able to publish those. Process wise, the little brush strokes that we're doing on each of these scales, though you can't see it on the video, up close when you're looking at it, you actually see the brush strokes as they're sitting on top of the wash, the blue wash. So it looks almost ridged a little bit, which is very you know, large scale-esque. So it looks a little more organic and not quite as flat as just white paint over the blue. That's really why I like this technique over dry brushing, because you can add a lot of subtle detail in there. Again, this isn't a competition miniature, and it's not a commission miniature. It's just for my own personal use, but those are some of the details that I really like to be able to see when I'm looking at my miniatures, and the types of details that I know my players, when they're looking at miniatures, when they're popped onto the table, really can take in and appreciate. So it's very rewarding for myself as well as for my players. Anytime you're using miniatures for your tabletop gaming, of course you want to make sure that aside from good quality paint job, you have them sealed really well. That way they can be handled at the table, moved around, taken from the display, put onto the table and then back. So this raw video will talk a lot more about the sealing process than we did with the frost giant. But right now we're just focused on working on painting scales and there are a lot of them. This sculpt here was really well sculpted. A lot of details of the scales are pretty clean all the way through to the kind of mid legs and rear legs, I should say, and the upper four legs or arms. So definitely a process to paint the scales. As we mentioned in the video, some of them we will be doing off camera, just so the videos can be a little more condensed. Of course, for me, I paint with music. So I've got a headphone in listening to my jams. I don't use the radio anymore just to avoid any strikes from YouTube. If you are doing any type of painting and listen to music, let me know in the comments below what, what type of music you use. And if it matches, I'm going to call it out and give you a congratulation if you have any that match my preference or what I'm listening to, especially during this paint job. If you guess correctly, I'll uh, definitely highlight you in the next video. So let me know your thoughts. What, what type of music am I listening to as I paint this white dragon? And what type of music do you listen to as you're painting your miniatures? And does it vary from miniature to miniature or monstrous to PC style? Are there any deviations or variances that you do? I know I do, it can be a lot of fun and really inspire how you paint. With this dragon here, this is the third dragon that I've painted for myself. And as I said in the video, I really like doing dragons. The first one I did was a red. The second one was a bronze. 
um, that I actually painted as a copper dragon and really enjoyed both of those. This white one, um, I've been looking forward to doing a white dragon for quite some time, uh, as well as a blue and a black. I am also working on a blue at the same time, and you'll probably see photos of that either on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, uh, the black is going to be coming in April. I'm looking forward to that dragon as well. Getting close to a little more commentary, so we'll slow it down for that. And thanks for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Now we're starting to see some of that white dragon really come through nice and clear. With the continued application of the paint going from the shaded deeper scales to the end we're pulling the paint wherever your brush stroke ends that's actually where the majority of the paint is going to end up at so by starting deep and pulling out the paint is heaviest to the end of the scale which is what we want. That way we keep the shadows intact. By pulling with multiple lines, I guess, strokes, We are adding texture in, even though it's hard to see, you're actually adding in texture because the brush strokes are starting at different levels or areas. So it's adding almost an organic texture into those scales. And here again, we start getting into more challenging ones, but just because of the size. Again, dry brushing at this step here could be easier for those arms. But starting to see that white dragon presence looking cold. Yes. All right, now we're going to go back up to that crest. That's definitely dry by now. Awkward spot. Nice and thin paint. Going from the eyes or from the top. There's this little bit of a just a double crest there. We're gonna make sure we kind of leave that shadow to touch so that we can. See more depth. I 
and then just like the scales, this tip here is going to go to a brighter white. And then we'll flush that up a little bit so that it stays kind of warm. You can see the whiter area in deep on the one side, a little bit more blue there. But we'll even that up as we are doing more fleshy tones in there. Bring in some of these scales here. to these more massive kind of plate-like scales. All right, let's speed it up again because it's just more painting white. Very exciting to do though. I am looking forward to the Bones 5 Kickstarter getting here so I can do my Black Dragon as well. But it's going to be very similar. Lots of big scales, so we'll see how that goes. With the way his neck is crooked here a bit, those ones probably have to get from the side a little bit more, which is a little challenging. But we'll make it happen. Oh yeah. A little overzealous on that one. All right, let's speed it up a little bit more. I'm still just painting some white scales and thinking about the Reaper 5 Kickstarter, we'll do an unboxing video and let me know if that'd be something you'd be interested in doing. Just about got this connected. What we got in the back? Let's speed it up again. So I know we talked just a little bit about the March Expo for Reaper Virtual. I sure hope to see a lot of attendees there. And I'm kind of hoping they talk about the Reaper Bones Kickstarter 6. We'll see about that, but we'll talk more about that in the next video, too. Such a big model. All right, try to condense. We'll speed up a little bit more. I know this video is long. I appreciate you sticking through it. And I hope you do some yoga while this is going on. Thanks for watching. And that's connected through on that spine. Onto the tail. Whew. It's a lot. That's a lot. I think we're going to call that good for tonight and hit it back again after a bit but there we go starting the scale process on blight fang more to come